If I had a bad day at work, the world knew about it. How do you cope with that? Getting booed and shouting at them. On the street, people chat. I used to get death threats. If you're drowning, you put your hand up, didn't you? Mm. Ask for help. When your life's spiraling out, spiraling out of control, you don't, you don't ask for help because men, we're, 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 we're too proud. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Men's Room Podcast. Adi Oladipo, Rory Jennings, very, very special guest in the building with us as well. I, special guest for me as well because I'm a Liverpool fan and this guy played for Liverpool. Uh, Mr. Neil Razor Ruddock. How are we doing? How are you, sir? How are you? Not bad, can't complain. So do you support? I'm a Chelsea fan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you I don't know if you could do that as a Millwall fan. Can, can you do that to a Chelsea fan as a Millwall fan? What, laugh. Yeah, yeah. Your, can yeah, you? we can at a minute because we Millwall we're meant to be rubbish. You're meant to be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose true. there is um, some, there yeah. is an element of truth in that. You know, there all, is. to be fair, all all, uh, all my life I I wanted Millwall to play like Chelsea and Chelsea are playing like us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, where'd you grow up? I grew up in South London in uh, Wandsworth, born in Wandsworth. Uh, Battersea, but I moved to Ashford in Kent, where my, my dad's company, Stuart Fraser's, I'm in a metalwork company, and the, and the uh, workforce moved down to all my friends as kids, sort of, we all moved down there, so. What was growing up like? It was good, two yeah. big brothers, um, as I say, Millwall fans, I can't remember choosing Millwall, I don't think you would if you had the choice, <laughs> but uh, we both, dad was a Fulham fan, brothers were uh, Millwall, so I was told I was Millwall, but my dad... God bless him, he's, he's long gone now. Dad Ted, he was a, he was a Fulham fan. He lived in, you know, York Road, Battersea. And uh, the close, closest ground to him was actually Stamford Bridge, Chelsea. So my dad used to follow me everywhere, around the country, abroad, Europe, everywhere. But when we played at, at Chelsea, closest to him and his dad, they wouldn't come and watch me there because Fulham weren't playing there. Wow. <laughs> that was a mentality. That mean, they yeah. still wouldn't go there. They'd go everywhere. They'd go like Newcastle, Barry, they'd go broad. But when, when I was playing at Stamford Bridge for another team, my dad and granddad wouldn't go there because Fulham weren't there. Makes just sense. on principle. Just yeah, dislike Chelsea that's, that's, so that's, much, yeah. But then my mum told me as a kid, he used to go to Fulham one week and Chelsea the other. So. Yeah. I know. No, some, yeah. I know. Some people, some people did that. I think there was a, there was a time when. Chelsea and Fulham had a sort of sibling relationship, like Chelsea yeah. fans used to go. But then I've got other, a, a couple of my mates, QPR fans. I offered one of them a chance to play at Stanford Bridge. Like I had an yeah. opportunity. He's like, I'm not doing that. Like he loves yeah. playing football, oh, playing yeah. on the same team. QPR fan, wouldn't dream of it simply because QPR weren't playing it. I quite like that yeah. tribalism. Oh, yeah, ridiculous there's got, there's got to be tribalism in football. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Rory always talk, obviously you played football in the 80s and the 90s. Yeah. We always talk about that's the, almost the last two decades as to when fans could relate to footballers. Yeah, I and mean... We could have a conversation we, with footballers. We used to, even at, when I was at Tottenham, we used to go out in the pub and we used oh. to have... Uh, you have right, no, rifles up the road. There was a pub on the, on the, like the main thing. There was, a, there was a nightclub there. I can't remember what that was called, but you had the corner pin wherever it was called there. Mm. So we, after the game, you know, the players' hands used to finish, you know, an hour after the game. The Liverpool used to go, we'll run Liverpool with, with the fans. Unless we lost. We didn't lose very often, but if we lost, you, you know, you spoil your night out. But uh, yeah, we used to... But we knew everyone. Mm-hmm. You knew them. So, you know, it weren't like uh, if a footballer walked into a local pub now, it'd be like, oh, everyone yeah. just yeah, treat everyone you. Got, yeah, they know yeah. you. They, you wouldn't know. happen. Wouldn't happen. It, they, they, know you, they, they know you. They know you. Just treat, treat you as normal. And, uh, yeah, was, I think the great. era that you're talking about here is what I consider to be the perfect era of football. I think it's, it's modern enough, this like late 90s period, right? It's modern enough to be safe and stadiums, yeah. were, stadiums were elevated a bit and... And football was was better, but it was also still relatable. Yeah, it was yeah. still football. It was still affordable. The players were That's still the one, affordable. Well, when, yeah. Nineteen ninety three, I signed for Liverpool, and it was uh, nine quid the cop. Yeah. Nine quid what? to go yeah. on the cop. What? Yeah. Because that's what I remember it because it was all tickets. Because your mates think oh, I'm coming up, and all my mates from London used to come. They used to think oh, we used to get four tickets. You'd have like. 10 mates want to come. Mm. So I used to think, yeah, I, was, I, was, I used to put them on a cop. It was only nine quid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it was nine quid with like 24 quid or 20 quid in the main stand. Well, I ain't paying that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was only nine. So it wasn't for, and I think them days as well, like music, fashion and football. All went hand in hand. They all it? went hand in hand, mm. didn't yeah. they? Music, yeah. fashion, football. And, you know, everyone, everyone could like to, I mean, you knew everyone. Yeah. Back then, you knew everyone because everyone could afford to, to come. They could afford to bring their kids now. You know, you, yeah. You go to stadiums now. You, do, you can't know. afford it. A family can't afford it. I as mean, well. it's, 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 it's getting there. It's, it's you know the kids all want, all want a football hamburger, didn't they, or a mm. football pie? You know, 
I don't have the programmes. I don't buy programmes anymore. The programmes, I bet they're, yeah, they're yeah. a fortune. Yeah. They are magazines now, aren't they? Yeah. So, yeah, every, every kid wanted their own magazine, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, sorry, programme. You know, they wanted, wanted to have a drink and a, and a bovril. And, yeah. you know, so I mean, it must be... It's, it's, a, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Like, you know, when I think back to that era, like Chelsea used to train at Harlington and I remember going there, like my dad would drive the cab down there and like, you know, like really good footballers, Rud Hullet, Mark Hughes, they'd be there. Like I remember Dennis Wise once sending me to get the ball, you know, like the ball had gone yeah, yeah. a little bit of a distance. He's like, off you go. And I ran and got the ball. I was over the moon, obviously. I think he's going to spot me. You know, now when you think about how good the players are that I just said there, all, all top level footballers, you know, now at Chelsea, all over the recent years at Chelsea, some very like distinctly average players. Cucurella's there now. Timo Werner was there a couple of years ago. Like terrible footballers, you couldn't get near them. No, like I couldn't. Like they would be seen as being superstars, paid to a level that makes them superstars. And yet, I was next to Rud Hullet as a kid. Yeah. Rud Hullet yeah. ever won a Ballon d'Or. Yeah, yeah, like Tottenham, West Ham, Liverpool. It was always open. It was always open. To uh, the, the gates were open, and the fans used to sit there to you know stand behind the rope, obviously. Yeah. But we always used to train. And, yeah, in front you know, of them and, you know. When you were playing, obviously, especially towards the back end, obviously the drinking culture is still big. Yeah. Like, it's just a normal thing, right? You have a drink after a football match. Was you planned at the end of your career where it started to phase away as well? No, it was still... When I played, it was the older players used to tell me, basically, mm. influence us what, what we were doing. You know, if the older players wanted to have a drink, you had to go out and have a drink. You know, we're out. We're out. Say we play Tuesday night, but we're out after the game. Everyone had to... Had to show up. I mean, uh, if you didn't show up, you had to show up. If you, you had a drink, you, had, you know, if you didn't want to have a drink, you had to get over them. The missus would say you're not allowed out, whatever. As long as you showed your face, that was fine. If you didn't show your face, you, you was in, you was in for it the next day in, in, in mental, training. Yeah. Mm, but yeah. they influenced us. You know, we're having a day out, we're out. So that, you know, nowadays, and I was still the older. But when I got older, when I got to the West Ham, now I was the older player that used to make the young players. Yeah. You know, you think we had when I started West Ham, we had we had. Ferdinand, Lampard, Joey Cole, Carrick. Bloody hell. Yeah. Great yeah. team. Defoe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Joey Cole, yeah, said, all, all these youngsters, I, I was the one that, come on, we're out, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. As well as older players around us. So I was still that older player. I think it phased out after me. See, it, 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 it owned to me, Liverpool won 2005, was it, Istanbul? Yeah. yeah. When they, I see a picture. I think it was on the. I don't know if it was a picture in the papers or I see it on the news or Sky Sports, but they showed them on the airplane. They had the European Cup, Champions League Cup, and they was all drinking bottles of water. I think, yeah. oh my God, changed. Yeah. Man, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's changed. Oh, we'd have had Robbie Fowler in that green. We'd have been yeah. drink, I would have been full up, you know, with champagne, whatever. And I think that, that, that has changed. So that general, yeah, that was a that was a sort of changing of the generation because yeah. I think I think there's that story, isn't there, with the you know when the influx of French players went into Arsenal. Yeah. I think there was like, there's a very funny story where I think the English players were all just like looking at the French players thinking they're never yeah. going to be ready for a game. Like, they're not, they're not well, professional, they're all smoking. I remember Di Canio, Di Canio, when we was at West Ham, we were massive, you know, we were great atmosphere at West Ham. I mean, we come fifth twice. I mean, we had a great atmosphere there. Older and young players, Harry got it right, the mixture. I say we come, you know, we had me, Di Canio, we had all these young players I was smoking about. Then you've got older players like, like Di Canio, Stuart Pierce, Winterburn. Yeah, myself, yeah. Trevor Sinclair, uh, Trev, yeah. Trevor, Trevor, and then we, you know, up front, big Johnny, Johnny Artson, yeah. Ian Wright. Crazy back then, wasn't so, it, Johnny? Oh, mate, we, we had a great mixture, you know. So we 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 used to we used to go out all the time, yeah. but then I think when we like me and Wright, right, he left, I left. I think that was a, yeah, that's that's early, excuse me, early two thousands. I think that that's when. That's when it changed. When Wenger, when, when Wenger came in Arsenal, it was that was late nineties, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So I think that, but but Parlo was saying Parlo at at West Ham, he was like, couldn't believe how much we drunk. Oh, really? Yeah, he was like, you're not crazy. (laughs) Really? Do you know what I mean? Did you used to pack it in before a gate? Like, was there? Oh, yeah, it was two days before. There was no, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, people think we weren't professional. We we were professional. We didn't, yeah. We didn't have what what they have now. We didn't have the, you know, we we didn't have the, the science. We didn't have the education. When I signed for Liverpool in 1993, we didn't have a physio. Really? What? One of the greatest teams in the world did not have a physiotherapist until six months. I was the dearest defender in the world. Two and a half million pounds. I was the dearest defender in the world. And I had a bad knee. I had a bad knee. And they got this new ultrasound. Ronnie Moran, God bless him, one of the greatest coaches. He's, he's dead now. Legend at uh, Liverpool, Ronnie Moran. One of the legends there. And he used to do the physio. He used to give you ice. You know, if you're, not, if you're injured, you don't play. You had less injuries back then. 
So I had a problem with my knees. They got a new ultrasound machine. Now this ultrasound, they turn it on. You can't feel anything. Yeah. So you put the ultrasound to my knee. They, you meant to put some gel on yeah. it. They didn't yeah. have none. So he went in the kitchen and got some fairy, li- fairy, washing up fairy liquid. <laughs> no, that fairy liquid. He put that on the ultrasound machine on my knee. The dearest defender in the world. Really? I was like, yeah, right, I don't. God, this changed so much. And if you get, like, the, the doctor used to come in Thursday afternoon. So if you got injured Friday, that was it. You was, yeah. was out for a week just ice it. That's all he had. It's mental. And what, six what, months in, they got physio. That, but that is how football changed. God. What do you miss more? Playing football, the, the, the camaraderie with the footballers? Winning matches. You, mean, you miss winning matches, but you miss uh, the lads. You know, you miss yeah. going in. They've got 40 lads every day and just yeah. taking a mickey out of each other. It, it, it was heaven. Um, you miss winning. Yeah. yeah. You know, you miss, you miss that buzz and that feeling of, you know, the, the cheer and walking off and you know still still next day you wake up and watch you know match of the day highlights or you know the big match whatever it was on the next day and see see what you got in the paper what mark you got remember they used to give that didn't they, oh, they sevens and eights. Well, I used to get I, I thought my name was Ruddock but it was Ruddock 5 every week I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I spelled my name again now that's me Mark Ruddock, Ruddock 5 do you, yeah. do you, you know that Liverpool side that you were part of that was a class team wasn't it yeah, like yeah. really good players yeah it was great it was do you look back players. on that team and think could like could have won the league that well, year. We, 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 we once we should have, we should have won it. It was like the Brendan Rodgers the other year when they when they messed mm. up three games mm. left. We we should have won it, but you know there was no Champions League then. It was only Champions. We we was always playing the UEFA Cup, you know. But we we'd come fourth, third or fourth, and we were failures back then. Mm. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? They weren't good enough back then. Yeah. Third yeah. and fourth, we used to get hammered for coming third or fourth. But you used to play in the UEFA Cup, and I mean, that was great competition. I mean, Ronaldinho Some playing great on. teams in there. Yeah. Mate, you used to play against PSGs and the Bayern Munichs and yeah. Fiorentinas, Romas, and, you know, they, was all, they, they was all in that competition. That was a, a proper... Because you wouldn't have known. Like, you know, now we have the accessibility. So, yeah. so you would know. You, you, now you can basically know every single thing about every single player on the opposition. Yeah. You know, then... Mate, you wouldn't have known, would you? PSG, remember play PSG and Roy Evans and Gaffer said they've just signed a Brazilian lad called Ronaldinho. I went, no, don't worry about him. I'll look after him. And look, when I see, <laughs> him, I see this, I see this long-haired, goofy like walk out, right, about five foot nine. I thought, don't worry about him. Look at him. What's he gonna do? Well, well, he give me twisted blood. Him, I'm oh, like, lost two no. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Really? Was he? If you think back over your entire career. Would he be the best player that you played against? I only played against him like two, well, two games. Um, Scalacci, I've been in Scalacci over games. Total Scalacci, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, uh, well, Jean Pierre Papin, Bayern Munich. Yeah. I mean, these players, oh. are quality the players. But I think days. over no, 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 over a long period, over like sort of fifteen years, top flight. I think there's three like Shearers close behind. You got the Shearers and all these people. But I think Cantona, Burkamp, Zola. Really? Because I used to love Shearer's. Shearer's you know, my best friend in football. So, I mean, we grew up in Southampton. So, I knew him. Yeah. Mm. So, I knew what he was all about. So, you know, you, you, for some reason, when you're playing against your mate, there's two things you want to do when you're playing against your mate is beat him and hurt him. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Whatever level you play. Yeah. Maybe if you're playing ping pong against your mate, <laughs> Paul, when you play your mate, this is a, your World Cup final. Yeah. It don't matter about anyone else. It don't yeah. matter if you're playing someone for 50 quid or your mate for nothing. I want to beat the mate more. <laughs> Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So when it comes here, you, and um, I played against those, and he only scored one, once against me. And all the times I played, he scored once. There was at St James with a bit of Sir Les Ferdinand out jumping, smashed me in the back. I went flying, it hit the bar when I landed on the line, and he ran in and smashed me in Shearer and ran off with that yeah. stupid, stupid I celebration. I love that celebration. <laughs> I mean, Cadsar, Burkamp, Zola, them three. I mean, I like when I played against Shearer, Shearer, Shearer was so clever. If the ball was going down the line, say it's going down the right wing, I'm running back to, towards my own goal. The ball's down the line, I'm on the halfway line, I've got Shearer, I've got Shearer, so I'm running back to my own goal. Shearer, Shearer's here. As soon as I looked to me away, that's when Shearer would go. He wouldn't look at the ball, he'd look at the yeah. defender. Yeah. As soon as the defender took your eyes off him, he'd just come round. Yeah. He was so clever at doing that. But like Cantona, Bergkamp, Zola, I'm sure. Like we played against Lineker, Lineker went long to come short. So yeah, Chio and Marie, don't let him turn, get, you know, get two men around him. All the, every time he's got the ball, make sure there's two men blocking so he can't turn and get a run on you. Um, but I'm sure, we can't have Burkham Zola. When the ball was coming to him, I'm sure they didn't know what they was going to do with it. So what chance I got? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. They were just so instinctive and just yeah. dumb things when they split second. Like the goal he scored against 
Leicester, was it? Bergkamp, or was it Newcastle? Uh, Newcastle, Newcastle or... Nikos oh. Stabidas. He didn't know what he was going to do him until he came and he just done it. Yeah. yeah. What Improvised. chance has the defender got? No so chance. Normally, the, you know, centre forward drops his shoulder, that means he's going to go that way. Yeah, yeah. He drops his shoulder, he's going to go, he's coming yeah. back to go that way, he goes that way. So you, you know what they're going to do. Them three, mate, I'm sure they didn't have a clue what they was going to do with it. And then you got no chance to defend But over a period of time, of them, them three were... Oh. How difficult is it when you know it is coming to the end? Well, you know you're I couldn't wait. Right? I couldn't wait, to really? be fair, mate. Really? Yeah, you, when you get 33, 34, you couldn't do what you, you could do. Mm. And it hurts. It become... I knew, I knew it was... When I was about 33, I left West Ham, went to Palace. I knew then, because I was getting up, going to work. I weren't getting up, going training. No. Mm. Yeah. I used to go, I've got to go training tomorrow. And I was thinking, I've got to go work. And when it comes... To that. Yeah. It's only words. Yeah. But me- mentally, I've got to go to work and everything hurts. You mm. couldn't do what you wanted to do. Yeah. You couldn't jump as I, you couldn't mm. run, you couldn't, you know, ice your knees after. You know, I've got arthritis in both knees now. But, you know, you still go for it. But 33, I just couldn't wait to get to 35 just to, just to hang them up. Would you have done the. The MLS and the Chinese oh, league and the long. Saudi Arabia. Would oh, you have Saturday. done that? I've done Saturday. <laughs> 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 Do you think I'd be speaking to you two, Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> if I'd gone to Saturday. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd love to America. I mean, on that age, I went, I went to Palace in recruiting. I went to Swindon. You know, so I wanted to get into coaching, but I didn't enjoy that, so I got out of that quick. But if America was available, I'd definitely gone to America because what a life for your wife and kids. Because this is the thing about Harry Kane at the moment, okay? Oh, interesting. He's 30. You've got to think about your wife and kids. When I was at Liverpool, I'd still fr- I had three years left at Liverpool. But if I'd have stayed at Liverpool for them three years, I'd have lived in that area. Mm. You know, my wife was, was from uh, Forest Gate, East London. Girl. Forest Gate? I'm yeah, a Stratford um, boy. So yeah, she's, yeah, so close, she's, yeah. You know, no, you know how tough she was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the, um, the thing about it, I'd have stayed. My kids were at that age. If I'd have stayed another three years, I'd have had to leave them in school. So I'd have had to stay in yeah. that area. You know, so it was the right time for me to go to West Ham. Mm. Now, Harry Kane's got babies. I think his wife's pregnant, pregnant now. Pregnant now, yeah. He's got two babies. I think he's got two, two kids as in, one on the way. He's got yeah. one or two or twins, two whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got to make decisions now for his wife. They've got a lovely house. I bet they've got a lovely community where they live. She's got all her friends. Her mum and her mum's close by to help her with the babies. Is he going to take... Is he going to go abroad to take mm. his wife and kids away from them? Yeah. Their grandparents and, and their sisters and... And brothers, if he was 10 years younger, yeah, go anywhere in the world. But I think now, and the thing about Harry Kane is, I don't know why we got into Harry Kane. No, 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 it's interesting. Yeah, the yeah, thing yeah, about yeah, Harry Kane as well yeah. now, people say he's got to move to, for, to win things, but Harry Kane's winning things on his own. He's won, won the golden boot. He's England's top goal scorer. He's uh, yeah. Tottenham's greatest goal scorer. Next thing is Premiership goal, goal scorer. It, that might be good enough for Harry Kane. But do you know he's yeah. winning things on his own. Tottenham, ain't. Do you know he's just, winning things on his own. But I'm saying that might be good enough for him. It might be. But Neil, you yeah. know when you get to when you get to your age and you look back on your career, do you not think that a player like Harry Kane, his legacy, do you not think it would be slightly underwhelming if a player of his quality ends up with a Premier League record or a Tottenham record or an England record? Do you not think a player like him? Like he's yep. the, the ability of the player is a Ballon d'Or winner. The ability all of the player is a European Cup winner. All I know, if he don't, if he stays up and don't win anything in ten years' time, people say me Harry Kane. I go, oh, what a goal scorer he was, by the way. Yeah. Mm. So, you yeah. know, I wouldn't think. Oh, he won the FA Cup medal. It's true. It doesn't you know what take, I mean. Yeah. I, 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 no, you're right. It doesn't different. take anything away from like, even when obviously different levels. But Matt Letizia. Wow, man. he could have done What's that move, plan? and we still wax lyrical about Matt Letizia, don't we? A plan. Even thirty yeah. years later, we're like, oh, Matt Shearer, Letizia. Shearer, he won the Premier League, didn't he? Blackburn. Yeah. yeah. I've got the same medal. I've, I've won a medal as well. Yeah. I've lost one. I've won the FA. I've lost the FA Cup and won the League Cup. But I've got a medal like Shearer. <laughs> <laughs> Will mm. it? Does it matter that much? Yeah. In history, that Harry Kane ain't won. And listen, I'd love to. You know, Tottenham have got this chart. What would they do, Tottenham? Now, I tell you what they got to do. They got to let what Ange, big Ange, I can't say his second name. Poster Cockle. Yeah. Him. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. So, big Ange, whatever big Ange wants, that's what Tottenham have got to do. Now, do you take the risk? Keep Harry Kane. Okay, lose 90 million. But if Harry Kane wins something this year, if Tottenham win the League Cup or the FA Cup, Harry Kane stays and he's there for life. If he goes, he's got 100 million pounds to spend. Mm. I'd, I'd rather him stay. I'd rather him go abroad than uh, spoil his. What's his word? Tottenham I'm legacy. Legacy. Yeah. His legend, yeah. Legendary yeah. status. Mm. Would he? I don't think he would. I think other players would. I think if you weren't such a goal scorer, if you was a midfield player or centre or full backs, 
and they come a call in, then I think you could do that. Mm. I think Harry Kane, I don't think you would. And would Levy let it? No. Levy let him go there. Would no. Levy, Levy go up? See, I can't. We won't go to them. That you know them. That red team across the park. No yeah. chance. Begins with A. You can't go there. I don't want to go Man United because I, I won't be able to like him anymore. Yeah. Because playing for Liverpool, mm, yeah. I'd love to see him at Liverpool, but they they won't buy him. They don't need him. But uh, Real Madrid can Real Madrid fold him now? Bellingham, Mbappe potentially as well. Yeah. Mbappe, we did, we, Mbappe goes. He won't go PSG. Yeah. Well, will say that PSG is only two hours away, mate. It, it could, you know, you get a train. You yeah. get a train from yeah, London. Yeah. You need the so, kids and the kids and wife home. Do a we, we're talking yeah. all about this, lads. We're talking every scenario, but nothing in football would surprise me. Yeah, you've you've obviously nothing moved, in you know. football would surprise me. Yeah. You know when it all comes to an end. Yeah. So when these, when this, when when it ended for you, West, West Ham was a fire. No, Pal- S- Swindon. 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 Yeah. Did you? Was that an easy thing to cope with? No. Well, it was. I thought it'd be great. Couldn't wait to put my feet up. Two months into that, was in. What happened? My my problem was, I loved a drink, and in football, the discipline you had to be disciplined. Obviously, you can't play professional football. Yeah. Quite simple. But if I had the chance to go out, I went out. And when I finished, I had no discipline had gone. I had no one telling me where I Because when you were playing football, you're told where to be at what time, <laughs> certain day, do this, not allowed to do that. Two days before a game, we was never allowed to go out shopping. You weren't allowed to pick the kids up, especially at Liverpool. If I was seen on a Thursday or Friday picking the kids up in Tesco's, week's wages, fine. So you always had that discipline. So when that discipline stopped, oh, this is great. And all of a sudden, just spiraled out of control and me drinking I was going I was going out for three four days on end you know you know I had loads of money I had fortunes I was I'd, I'd meet people I'd go in a pub on my own and I'd start talking to people because everyone knew me they'd come up to me I'd, I'd kidnap them I'd pay for the you know, come out me ain't got to pay a thing I'd pay for everything I'd, I'd pay for a hotel if we went somewhere and yeah. I'd go to Dublin just get, get on a plane to Dublin stayed there for three days you know thinking oh, my wife she'll understand I've been so disciplined I'll buy her a new Rolex or something and mm. she'll understand I'll get a new car she'll know mm. but they don't you know and ended up in rehab um, how soon after drink. oh two years one mm. half years weren't, not, weren't, weren't long um, but then I was the with drinking 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 went out of control but what I've learned, what, what back then, looking back, experience is wasted on old drunks. You know what I mean? Well, someone told me years ago, experience is wasted. You'll, you'll get it one day. And I do get it because I'd always let my family down, but I would never let my mates down. Mm. Do you know? Mm. And that was through my football because I, I had to, what the lads do is football, you're in a team. Yeah. But I took it outside football when I finished football. And I'd always, I'd always let my family down and always let my mate, not let my mates down. And... I've learned that now, but as I say, because of experience. Now, in my life now, as soon as I close that door, whatever's outside don't mean nothing to me. Whoever's in my house now, they mean too well to me. So I have learned, but as I say, it was just pure discipline and not being told what, where to be. And I, I thought, it was, this is great. And it weren't, it weren't great. It was, it was, a, it was a nightmare. Do you, do you think football doesn't help footballers enough? Not, not, well, maybe now. I, I can't speak for him now. I don't know. From, you know your, mental, your time? Oh, no chance. You know, if you, if you was down in the dumps, you know, you're down. Because pre- if I had a bad day at work, the world knew about it. Mm-hmm. You know, if I had a bad day, you've got no... How do you cope with that? Getting booed and shouting at and on the street. People shout. I used to get death threats when I was playing. If I'd kick, I'd get death threats. When I was at Liverpool, I used to get bullets through the post with razor written on them. You used to get the police in. Right? It was big, bright police coming and taking live ammunition. I used to have death threats. You know, I had, I had a stalker, this girl stalker, and this little lady, and she ended up, she ended up in, a, in a hospital, you know, yeah. being sectioned. It was just, my, my life was mad, and, you know, and people don't know where kids go to school. So I had all this pressure, and then you have a nightmare, and then you're getting booed, you're getting slaughtered in the papers, live on telly you had a nightmare, <laughs> and you had no help, no. Yeah. It, was, it was a case of, Grow up here and get on with it. You know, when you went into rehab, did your former clubs help at all? Were they no, involved? PF, uh, no, no, this is when I retired. No, the PFA. The PFA, PFA Professional Football Association. They, they, uh, I went in Tony Adams. Yeah. Right. Tony Adams place down in uh, Hook, Hook in Surrey way. Yeah. But um, Sporting Chance, it was called. Um, no, the PFA paid for me. Right. Because, uh, you know, it's like 
If you're drowning, you put your hand up, didn't you? Mm. Ask for help. When your life's spiraling out, spiraling out of control, you don't, you don't ask for help because men, we're, 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 we're too proud and we've been taught, you know, back then, grow up there, get on with it. Everyone's got problems. And you just get deeper and deeper and deeper and depressed. I don't like depressed, the word depressing. I like to say I'm down in the dumps. Mm. But I could see no way out, you know, and the only way I could see it was getting drunk because I had, I call it mad, bad, sad and glad syndrome. When I was mad, I got drunk. Mad, bad, sad and glad. Every emotion I had, what'd you do? Get drunk. Don't drink. get drunk. Mm. Yeah. I thought that was my answer to everything because I didn't have the education or I didn't have the, I'm nearly sworn then, <laughs> I didn't have the balls. Yeah. <laughs> To, to, to speak out and ask for help. It's like men today. If, if, if we're driving around, right, and you, you get a, so you drive around in your car and you get a noise or something, your car starts, what do you do? Straight, straight to the mechanic, mm. get it mended, pay money. If we're feeling bad, we won't go to the doctor that costs nothing in case he tells us bad news and we can't go to the pub next week or we can't go golfing to Marbella mm. with the lads. Yeah. That's how, that's how mentally we mm. are weak. Yeah. To so what, so what, would your, even, what would your take from that be? That back then, when he first realised that things were getting a bit out of control, that you should have then asked for help? I thought I was alone. I thought I was the only one with problems. I'm going to drink too much. You know, I'm down. You know, no one likes me anymore. You know, and I didn't realise you could... It's okay to say, I'm not good. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's a sign of weakness, especially I was a big razor. I just big about to tough, say that you're the guy the big yeah. tough yeah. man in the dressing room mm. yeah. you know I had problem you know I was always a go between between the manager and the lads if the lads had a problem I'd say what's the matter mate yeah, tell me and I'd go to Gaffer Gaffer and I but if I had problems I didn't have that go between yeah. and yeah. I couldn't tell the Gaffer because he think I'm weak and I wouldn't be the go between I wouldn't be the top man in the dressing room anymore because the hero in the dressing room when I was playing was the best drinker and the, the man who went out with the girls and mm. the best womanizer whatever the womanizer mm. nice way of putting it the best woman I was, the best drinker was a hero in the dressing room. It wasn't the best player in the dressing room. Mm. You know, so, but we didn't have no help. We didn't have any, it was just a case of get on, get on. And back then, if the club didn't want you, you you're gone. So you didn't want to upset the manager. The managers, managers rule my life. Now, players rule managers' lives. Yeah. In my yeah. day, yeah. he ruled my life. I had to be good to him. I had to do everything he said. I didn't want to upset him because if he sells me, I've got to go and sell me house, uproot me kids move away from, you know, yeah. down the other part of the country. Now, players rule managers' lives. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's you, completely changed. You, just, just moments ago, you were talking about sort of the loyalty that you displayed to your teammates. You would always, at times, by your own admission, they prioritise yeah, friends. Yeah, long. Did that, was that reciprocated when things were going wrong for you? Did, pe- did your friends no, within the I, game... I, 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 ate it, I ate it well. People didn't know. I was always at me and very right. lucky and... Always hid, you know. Uh, I was down and dancing, and I think it did affect me. Affect my performances, you know. It did affect me. I didn't, you know. I felt oh, I, I, I was really, really confident, you know. I always knew my ability, knew what I was good at. And then I was going in the game, sort of last five years of my career, like going in the game, thinking, oh, please don't have a nightmare. Now I'm thinking about it. Well, I've never ever thought of that. Yeah. You know, don't have a nightmare. Please don't have a nightmare for two reasons: I'm going to get slaughtered, and if if we lose, I can't go out tonight and get drunk. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that is crazy in itself. You know, I was, I was very, very confident. But uh, when things go against you, 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 you know, you didn't know you had to stand alone. Did you? And I, as I say, I had to hide it because I, I was Razor. You know, it's like now, if Razor Ruddock wants to go out and get drunk, I don't go out with him because he's a bit crazy. If Neil <laughs> Ruddock wants to go out and get drink, I go out with him because he's all right. <laughs> That's how it might be. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you understand yeah, what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Because it's people, not a personality. People, people, yeah. people want to see Razor. They don't want to see Neil Ruddock. They want to see Razor. Hello, Razor. Yeah. All this. So I don't do that anymore. If he wants to go, I don't go out. I go out as Neil Ruddock. Did you, do you look at players now and sort of see some players going down slippery slopes with that? There's been a lot of talk in the last couple yeah. of weeks about Jack Grealish. Jack, no, I think Jack, I think he's, and, he's, and the drink he's, and stuff. he's still young enough. And I think if it was if it was during the season, he got, I mean, a few years ago, when he drink driving and smashed his Range Rover into parked cars and yeah, all that, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So. I mean, he's, he's, he's learned, he's grown up since then, but the thing is, how many other players are doing it? But because he's Jack Grealish, there's cameras everywhere because he's yeah. Jack Grealish and yeah. he plays for Man City, they've just won the treble. Yeah. Yeah. You know, other players do it. But uh, I think the best thing to do it is not hide it. When he goes out, yeah, yeah, true. not hide it. Obviously, he's drunk, he's 
they was holding him up because he's just won the treble. Yeah. But don't hide away because if when you hide away, that's when people want to follow you around and, mm. you know, listen, if he, weren't, if he weren't behaving himself and looking after his body, he wouldn't be starting for Manchester City because you <laughs> can't not behave yourself and look after your body and play elite football now if you weren't behaving yourself. So, in life, listen, there's so many ups and downs and bad things that happen in life. When you do good things, you've got to celebrate, surely. Yeah, no, you're right, you're you've right. People have made the comparison with Gazza in him, but yeah, you're no, right, it's just yeah. what people do. Yeah. How did you sort of make the big U-turn? Neil, obviously, looking went, at you, um, you're healthy, you're yeah, fit I now. I went to, you... um, I say, on rehab some years and years ago, I got married now. Uh, Leah, my wife now, um, she's my drinking partner now. You know, mm. if I have a drink, I drink at home while we go to a nice restaurant. You know, I don't, mm. I don't need that waking up every morning or, or you know, bad and I'm, during code, I put loads of weight on. Mm. I worked out, I, put, I only put, this is how mad it is. I was 27 stone. Okay, I got up to my biggest. That's but, crazy. That's huge. That's crazy. Huge, huge. But at the time, during code, I thought, nah, I'll be all right. I'm going to diet next week. Going to diet next week. But then I went to see the, the, the surgeon who had a gastric sleeve operation eventually. But I went to see him and he said, well, last sort of 10 years, what was it worked out? I can't remember. But it was only, I've only put like seven pound on a year. It was like, I think that's quite easy, isn't it? Yeah. But you do it year by year. Adds up. You don't realise. Yeah. Because yeah. ain't, you ain't put like 10 stone on bang. Yeah. 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 And when you put it on gradually... He says, people don't realise, people don't realise. And it's in your head, oh, I can lose it, I lose it, lose it. But it just takes your old spoils out of control. And then I went, I was playing at a charity football, I wasn't playing because I couldn't have 27 stone. Went to a charity football match in Elton, South London. And I see Arge, James Argent out of The Only Way is Essex. Yeah, put on a bit of weight as well, didn't he? And he was massive. And then I see him, he was like that. He was like, oh, he'd lost 13 stone. Went, <laughs> and he told me about the gastric sleeve, so that was it. Boom. Rung with Mrs. Gold with him. She spoke to Arge, got me the surgeon, Dr. Stevenson. And I was in, within three months, I went in and had it done. And that was September the 8th when the Queen died, God bless her. I'm my operation the same day and I lost just under nine stone now. Congratulations. Gosh, so, but and well, how I was feeling? myself, basically. Oh, mate, no. oh, the dad, uh, the dad, the kids have got their dads back now. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't, I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go on holiday because I thought it was too much walking. That yeah. airport, have you seen that? Yeah. Gatwick, have you seen how long it is? It's an easy jet. From, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't go on holiday. I said, we're still over here. We're going on holiday. <laughs> that's it's how lazy, you know it. what I mean? But that's, a, that's how mentally disturbed and strange I was. You know, I'd, I'd, I would make my kids go without a holiday abroad because I couldn't be bothered to walk 100 yards here and there. Yeah. Mm. I mean, how I, mad is that? D- it's crazy, d- isn't does it? that sleeve work? It, it 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 stops you overeating, doesn't it? I t- I've got I've got the sleeve, which is they took seventy percent of my stomach away. I can't I can't eat a lot, right? But I enjoy my food now than when I was yeah eating everything because I can eat anything I want. I can eat cream cakes. I can eat kebabs. Yeah, I can have pie and mash, but I can only have a half a pie. A little bit, <laughs> yeah. but I still get the satisfaction and the taste. Yeah, I still go to the Indian restaurant with my mates. All the free dishes. I can only have a mouthful of each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say it's 60 pounds worth. I eat, I eat like three and a half quids worth. But, <laughs> but that's sax, I get 60 pounds worth of satisfaction. satisfaction I still yeah. get the taste. I still, mm. get, still get the satisfaction. So, I mean, it's a great thing. My knees don't hurt anymore. I can get around. But, yeah, but most important to that, I'm happy now, you know. You seem in a really good place. I mean, I'm in a great place. Yeah. I'm in a great place. But it, it takes something like, the doctor said, listen, three months you'll be dead. I had a pacemaker fitted before that. So I've done Harry's Heroes. I was running around, I felt all dizzy, and this three years before COVID. How long was COVID? What, that Harry's here? I, I remember TV that series. Show. Is that where that happened? So I was doing that, and I, I went all dizzy, and I thought, because at the time it was kind of like dementia with footballers, ex football. I thought, oh no. So I kept going dizzy, and I think, oh no, because I used to edit a lot of footballs. So yep. There was a lot of debate going on at the moment. It's funny, as you say, yeah. sorry to cut across. Remember yeah. the, the head of the big header you scored for Liverpool? United. After yeah. United, yeah. and it looked like you were saying you had a headache then. Palace whacked Oh, is that what it was? Oh, okay. So I. So I used to whack heads, I mean, got scars all everywhere. I used to bang. I used to get a, If I had a cut, I used to try and rip it open so it looked better and more yeah. blood. <laughs> I'd squeeze me blood, you know what I mean? It's yeah. everywhere. I'd squeeze it so it looked like yeah. Terry Butcher. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at me, I'm yeah. hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, was, I was getting dizzy, so I thought, oh no. You know, heading balls. It was. It would just come out of papers and things, you know, dementia about the older players, God bless them. Good luck to all the older players, by the way. And 
So I went to see a specialist. He, he said, he, oh, it's not to mention. He went, is your heart? I went, oh, thank God for that. Oh, I was only in my heart. Oh, jeez. I was like, I'll be He said, no, Ray. He said, you carry on too much, you'll be dead. He said, you, you, your heart at the moment is 78-year-old man's heart in a minute, the way I was drinking and eating too much. 78-year-old man. He said, but we got it, you know. So in the end, I had to stop my heart because it was beating at 140 a minute, my heart rate, which is yeah, doing a marathon. Rate, yeah, doing yeah. a marathon. And that was just sat down. Resting was 140. Now it's 60. But that, what they had to do is stop my heart mm-hmm. and then re- pump it again, push you know, it start Stand again. back. You know, oh, like you, I can't remember the procedure's called. So basically, I, they killed me to, to keep, your life. keep me alive again. Mm-hmm. So my heart rejigged and then I've got a pacemaker. Pacemakers for, for, for uh, you know, when you're, uh, when you're asleep. Because you know when you're, when you're asleep, you know when you jump? Yeah. That's your heart stopping. Is that what that is? Is that and what it, that is? That's your heart stopping, right? Everyone, everyone does I'll it. I do that everyone a lot, yeah, yeah. And everyone does it. It's not a thing. But your body will make you think you, you've fallen off a cliff or... Yeah, yeah. So you wake up and your heart starts again. Bloody so your, 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 heart, your heart will stop. Your heart will stop. Everyone's here in this room. Heart will stop three seconds a night. Mine will stop in eight seconds. In eight second yeah. blocks. So I'll die in eight seconds. So you're, you're going three seconds. But that's normal. Three seconds. Yeah. So that's why, that's, uh, that's why I have a pacemaker now. So it just keeps, keeps me... Yeah. And how's Why? that? Is that all going? Oh into yes, that? it's great. It's great. So, we, so, so but that was through Harry Zeros. So if there, I would yeah. have done Harry Zeros, I'd have mostly been dead. Simple. So or through drink drinking. The moral to every every issue that we've that we've discussed, it's seeking help, isn't it? Go and every, look everything. After yourself. Yeah. Go and get you go go to the doctor every six months and yeah. just am I all right? Have a blood test. Yeah. So yeah, you're all right. Go on, have another go. Enjoy yourself for six months. Conversation about the gastric sleeve. A conversation about the pacemaker and a conversation about yeah. the mental health. Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all, mine, mine was all down to, down to drink, for, couldn't wait to, to, to give up for whatever life. Do you life think you style. were ever an alcoholic? I, 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 I don't think, I, 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 was, I mean, I'd done 30, when I was in um, Rio, about to do 30 meetings in 30 days and I don't think I was, you know, I, I was just it's like excited. Drink. Can you drink now without, yeah, without, drink. Without, but without wanting yeah, yeah. more? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can, I can stop. I think experience is, is I, I was just excitable. Yeah. I wanted to say, oh, this is great. I'm, I'm retired and mm. this is going get, no one's telling me. Yeah. And, but, but, and a bit of anti authority because I had no one telling me off and I won't get him fined and mm. I can do this. This is great. You know, and it just got hold of me. And, you know, and then I got mad, bad, sad, glad syndrome. So when mm. I was mad, bad, sad, and glad, whatever situation I was in, what was it? How do I get out of it? Go and get drunk. And I had fortunes of money around me. Yeah. So it it's a combination. I weren't any, hurting anyone because I just treat my missus and you know if I hurt, you know upset Young, anyone. Famous, rich. Yeah. That's, pitfalls, that isn't it? that was a thing. Pitfalls, yeah. And lucky I, I won into gambling. Thank, yeah. thank God I won into gambling. Yeah, yeah. Thank God for that. Yeah. You know, as we wrap, um, going back to football, um, obviously look, you played for a lot of big teams. Who do you associate with the most? Like what games are you looking out for three o'clock on a Saturday? <sighs> I suppose Liverpool because that, that, that's good where answer. I was there. And that's the end of the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, noticed, I, mean, I, mean, I noticed. I mean, I love me Tottenham. Yeah. I do. I do love me Tottenham. When Tottenham play Liverpool, whoever need the points at the time, I want them to be there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think because I was Liverpool nearly six years, mm. you know. So you know, other clubs I was there one or two years, but you know, I'm, I'm loved up there. Um, great place to live. I enjoy myself there. Do you go up at all? Where you earn the most money? <laughs> it's funny because I um, he doesn't make my ex-wife a millionaires. <laughs> I no, but I always, I always, I always go up there. I mean, all my friends, my close friends are there, <laughs> so no, I enjoy it. But I, I go to Tottenham, I go West Ham, I go, I go, I go, I go to all of them. I always, I always back all my teams I play for. I back them on the accumulator. Do you? Every week, ain't come in in ten years. She <laughs> yeah, has not yeah, come in. They've that. never all won. In <laughs> 10 get, years. get rid of the Millwall one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, they're the ones that saved me last year with Tottenham. Yeah. Tottenham had let Tottenham me down last year. Yeah. It's funny, as we wrap, because I listen to the Robbie Fowler podcast. Not it doesn't yeah. do it anymore, but it's a great podcast. And he mentions you as like the biggest prankster yeah. ever. But because you're also so big, yeah. not much you could do about it. No, yeah. no, no, no. As I say, I used to... That, that used to be, I used to... Because I, I was so not, not happy at times that I used to have to do things and make myself laugh yeah. and everyone else laugh. So. Mm. 
But as I say, I was always a prankster. And as I say, that's what's what Razor Ruddock, he, he's, he's, he ain't wired up right, but Neil Ruddock's all right, so I'm Neil Ruddock now. Honestly, it's been great having you, Neil. Hey, pleasure. Thank Hope Chelsea, you so much. Hope Chelsea don't do nothing. <laughs> they won't. They won't. Come yeah, on, you mighty yeah. Reds. Yeah. 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 Right I, wish, I wish Chelsea all the best. Nah, thank uh, you. Neil Razor Ruddock. Thank you very much. Story. Thank you so what much. Good story. Yeah. Uh, as always, uh, thank you for tuning in to the Men's Room podcast. Make sure you download the podcast from wherever you download it from. And if you are watching this on YouTube, do us a favour. Like it, share it, leave a comment. Me and Rory will jump in to the comment section as we always do and we'll see you on another episode of the Men's Room Podcast.